There's a new eat to earn app called Blackbird, which I've been farming pretty aggressively in the past couple of weeks. How does it work and how much am I actually being paid to eat? I'll talk about everything in this video, so let's get right into it. Blackboard is a free eat to earn mobile app that uses its native fly token to help restaurants better connect with their guests, measure customer lifetime value, and drive top line revenue growth. The reason I'm excited is because of the founder, Ben Leventhal. He previously founded Eater, which was sold to Vox, 10 years ago for $30 million, and he also co-founded Resi, to, and he sold it to American Express for an undisclosed amount. He raised $11 million for this company in 2022, and I also heard rumors uh, that they raised $24 million in the Series A this year, putting the valuation of the company post money at $120 million FDV. So, you know, pretty successful founder. S seems like he raised a bunch of money, um, and now he's going to focus on expanding this business um, and maybe selling the company at a future date. Right now, it's only available in New York, but they have plans to expand to LA, San Francisco, and Miami. And they're not only going to be uh, like restaurants, it's going to be bars, clubs, other shops. Uh, so pretty holistic there. So let's talk about the token, how it works, and answering the question, what makes this different from other like walk to earn or X to earn applications, isn't this all a Ponzi? So I'll discuss those questions later in the video. So you can go to blackbird.xyz and check all the participating restaurants. And if you actually visit, this is Upside Pizza uh, near Chinatown, there's gonna be this little uh, square thing that you can tap your phone into. And then for every tap, both the user and the restaurant gets the same amount of fly. So it's kind of like this dual incentive mechanism, uh, incentivizing both demand and the supply side. You also get an NFT when you dine in for the first time with perks along the way. For example, uh, I went to Monsieur Vo twice. The first time I got a free sake shot. No, that was free. Um, and then on my third visit, I'm going to get a surprise gift, which I have no idea what this is. Um, and there's another uh, restaurant called Madame Vo, which I think is owned by the same person. Um, and on my first visit, I got a free Vietnamese iced coffee. And the third time I got a free spring roll. And the cool thing here, um, and if you think about how everything's going to connect, um, on my fourth visit, I'm going to get a free glass of wine at Monsieur Vo. So if I go to Madame Vo for the fourth time, then they're incentivizing me to go to Monsieur Vo for my next visit because I'm going to get a free glass of wine and maybe I'm going to get like a free appetizer or something. So you can kind of imagine um, how this can all tie in in the future, where if a family business has multiple locations um, across Manhattan, Brooklyn, New York, uh, then maybe there's going to be like, like different ways to incentivize people to go to different restaurants, try out different menus, seasonal menus. And that way you can kind of, you know, give um, diners a better experience. There's also ways for restaurants to sell memberships. So for example, Upside Pizza for $200 a year, I can get one slice with any topping per day for a full year, access to the private concerts, some exclusive merchandise, etc. I know a few people um, that's purchased this because they want to farm this. And if they go five times a week, that's less than a dollar for a pizza slice every single day. And for New York, that's pretty good. Um, and there's other, I mean, you can pause if you want. Um, there's like other perks that you can use to create utility for the fly token. Um, but you know, this is kind of mumbo jumbo at this point, just because they just launched a couple months ago. And then, you know, the question is like, what problem are they solving? There seems like they're just incentivizing people to eat um, by like, inflating his token. Um, but obviously Ben Levendahl, he's been in the space for a couple decades. He definitely knows what all these restaurants deal with. And you know, what makes this different from other loyalty programs? He calls this the guest ownership program where you know, restaurants face this compounding problem of having uh, an extremely low fidelity understanding of who their customers are, while at the same time paying extremely high fees to access them. And legacy examples like Five Star, where you know you go to a particular location, you get points, um, they tend to be engineered such that uh, they fall short in three crucial ways. First, they often encourage loyalty not to the restaurants, but instead to the 30 parties that run them. Second, um, though restaurants pay fees to you know for the privilege of this information, um, they're also forced to give away free items, um, and they don't really actually earn points or control how they can be redeemed, um, and they don't really get to participate in the upside for these third-party loyalty programs. Lastly, these programs operate independently of the others, and as a result, restaurants they get just a pure data dump of who their customers are, like name, email, phone number, age, maybe. Um, and it doesn't really give them a, like, a better understanding of how to better cater um, their services and their products to their customers. So Blackboard aims to solve these problems by having uh, or creating um, their applications on top of Web3 Rails, blockchain Rails on base chain, uh, incorporating tokens, incorporating, incorporating NFTs, um, and you know cutting costs that way. So tokenomics wise, let's talk about that. Uh, the total supply uh, for the first three years is gonna be capped at 500 million tokens. Maybe at some point there can be a governance proposal to you know, increase, this to, uh, increase this to a billion, but that's kind of how it works in the short term. 25% uh, 
is going to go to the restaurants, 25% of the consumers, because every time you tap in, both the restaurants and the customers get the same amount. Some goes to the treasury, the team, uh, the fly uh, warrant holders, like the investors. Um, and how it works is every day, there's a fixed issuance per day. So if there's like no one going out to eat, then anyone that goes out gets a bunch of tokens. If a bunch of people eat out, then the people get less tokens. So, you know, it's not like a fixed issuance per customer, it's a fixed issuance per day distributed to anyone that dies, dines out. So we don't really know the exact math, but, um, you know, people in the Humble Farm Army Discord community, we've kind of done like the back, back of the envelope analysis of, okay, like how the, is the issuance curve, <laughs> like, what, like what is it actually like? And we kind of thought it would be something like this. Um, if you kind of like, you know, just like reverse engineer this, um, but like roughly 170,000 tokens per day um, at launch, and then it kind of slowly dwindling down over time. In mid to late September, we expect the issuance to be like roughly this. So, you know, depending on how much tokens are issued per day, you can kind of, you know, think about, okay, like there's like this many daily active users. Um, and just because it launched and no one really knows about this, um, the issuance has been pretty high. So I guess I'm hurting my yields by making this video. Um, but I do think it's a cool application that I want people to know about um, that, you know, if you're in New York, I think you should definitely take advantage of this opportunity. I even know a few people that like is flying out to New York just to farm this. So, you know, I'll talk about the price targets for, uh, you know, this token later. Um, and, you know, of, of course, as there's more adoption, the points over time kind of goes down. Um, and this isn't like perfect, um, but it seems like, you know, um, the, like there's like less points that you get on like a Friday and a Saturday compared to Friday, like Wednesdays and Thursdays. So, I mean, that kind of makes sense. There's probably less people eating out on Wednesdays and Thursdays relative to like Friday, Saturday, Monday, and Sunday. Um, but I'm sure that over time, uh, you know, we'll get better information on the like, average issuance per day, uh, given uh, like a particular weekday or weekend. Uh, so this is like my current metrics. I spent roughly $500 to farm 41,000 tokens. I've also been tracking my weight and Interestingly enough, it's kind of going down, maybe because I've been walking around in 90 degree Manhattan weather, um, but it's getting kind of cooler now. So I expect, you know, uh, my weight to start trending up. Um, and as you can see, um, recently, uh, a couple days ago, I only got like a couple hundred tokens. Um, I think yesterday people got 600 tokens. So it really depends when you go um, and depending on like how many people are dining in that particular moment. So, okay, like, you know, of course it made sense to farm this. Um, at like a thousand, two thousand like issuance, but you know, like, is it really still worth farming at 100, 200, 300, 400 fly tokens uh, per dine in? So, you know, how much is it going to be worth? And I think the answer is yes. So I'll first, you know, give some simple analysis on like, okay, like if this token gets to this valuation, how much is it going to be worth? And then I'll talk about, okay, like how can we value this company um, relative to, you know, I guess it's, uh, its peers and competition. So. If we assume a $120 million FTV at launch, which is like what they launched at or like what they raised at for their Series A, it would price fly at 24 cents. So um, if you dine in and you get 100 fly, which you know, might be reasonable for the past couple of, for, for the next couple of weeks and months, that's a $24 meal rebate, which I think is pretty reasonable. Um, and if you look at other X to earn applications like Sweatcoin and Steppen, um, you know, Sweatcoin, it's still hovering at like, well, 100 to 200 million dollar market cap and step in which is like the walk to earn app on solana it's sitting at a billion dollar fdv so what if it gets to a billion fdv then it would price at fly at two dollars which would mean a 200 dollar meal rebate okay that definitely makes sense um but if you look at step in i mean if you were still in the crypto markets back then uh, you probably remember last year there was like this crazy pump in step in where it reached over 2.3 billion dollar um circular market cap which was effectively like over $10 million FTV. So what if Fly gets to some euphoric, you know, like level, right? For like whatever reason, it's like sometime in 2024 or 2025, like how much can uh, the, the Fly token be worth? Well, at $10 million, uh, $10 billion FTV, it would put Fly at uh, $20. So even if you get 100 Fly, that's a $2,000 meal rebate. Um, and it, you know, it, like you're not like just getting these tokens. These tokens are going to have utility. So even if you're pessimistic on the token price, you know you're still getting utility out of this. And it's also like a pretty good incentive to you know go out, meet new people. Um, and uh, personally, I've been using Blackbird um, as like a way to connect with other people in crypto as a net, as like a networking tool um, to you know uh, to have like a better like face to face uh, like human interaction. Um, because you know crypto, like you're just like facing my screen all the time. Um, it, it, it gets pretty lon uh, lonely sometimes. So I think it helps like have. Um, applications like this um, that tries to connect Web3, like blockchain reels, to the actual real world. Um, and unlike Walk to Earn, 
Blackboard is actually creating real value in the economy by encouraging people to consume physical goods. Um, so, you know, like if I go to, uh, you know, if I spend $10, $15 at a pizza, right? I mean, that dollars like, are directly going to the restaurant. And you can also think about the multiplier effects of like the economy where, you know, if I spend, uh, if I eat like two slices of pizza, then chances are maybe I go to a local bar to drink some beer. Um, so, you know, it's creating real world value, um, like, you know, by inflating these tokens. Um, and it also encourages consumption because walk to earn, right? People were buying these like devices where they would like just put their phone in, like just swing it back and forth, right? It, it goes like this. And then they would get a bunch of these sweat tokens and like these step in tokens. And it was easily like civilable or like, easily farmable. Um, but at least like this time around, like you actually have to go to these physical locations and eat. Um, and there's like no actual tricks. Uh, so, you know, like this way, uh, maybe it actually has more value. Uh, and because people are actually spending money at uh, the actual restaurants, um, there's going to be, you know, um, like as Blackbird gains more users, there's going to be, you know, more eyeballs within the application, which advertisers can tap into. But, you know, like what's the point of it, right? Other than like, you know, using it to for perks, uh, selling it in the open market, who's going to be buying it, right? Isn't this just a Ponzi? Um, Right, it just seems like it's a yield farming tool, right, with extra real life steps. Um, and like I mentioned, I do think advertising can play a key role. Sweatcoin, right, they literally just give away tokens for people to walk. Um, but because they have hundreds of millions of daily active users, or maybe not daily active, but like, you know, hundreds of millions of users, uh, they have an advertising model, uh, which amounts to like roughly $20 million in annual revenue. And also, you know, uh, Blackboard has these like in app uh, memberships, which they can easily take a 5 to 10% fee on. Uh, and Square, and this is like one of the like the big use, use cases that I see. Um, and uh, point of sale systems like Square and credit card companies, they charge a pretty hefty fee, right? Three to 5% on average. Um, and if you think about one of the use cases for blockchains, it's stablecoin uh, stable issuance and stablecoin um, settlements. So if Blackbird can just undercut Square and other point of sale um, or like credit card processing fees and maybe charge 0.5 or 1%, you know, that can be a pretty strong like, value prop for these restaurants um, because, you know, two to 3% over the course of a year really adds up. Um, so, you know, I guess settling like, transactions in stable coins like, in app can be a really good way to, you know, I guess save costs for the res uh, restaurants and maybe, you know, uh, like those cost savings can be passed down to customers as well. And Leventhal, the founder mentioned that he can potentially sell Blackbird to a payments company in the future. So I feel like, I feel like you know, this is definitely, um, the trend they're going to and like maybe they can even sell it to like someone like google or like yelp um because you know they might have a bunch of data uh, he mentioned this in like one of the podcasts he's done a lot of them um and if you think about like web 2 companies and i guess comps um i think yelp is a pretty obvious one right um because you know they have a bunch of data they have, they have reviews and they can sell ad slots to like businesses um and even trip trip advisors because all, all these companies they sell targeted ads to businesses. They have, you know, subscription services, commission, sponsored placements, and that I feel like that's the direction uh, Blackbird is going to go. Um, and I think from a user engagement perspective, I think you know Blackbird is way more exciting um, and has a much better path towards um, like like uh, like more like user retention, daily active users. There's something like Yelp um, and TripAdvisor, um, and but like both these companies are worth two to three billion dollars. Um, and you know, why can't Blackbird get there, right? I mean, the founder is definitely legit. He's already had successful exits. Um, I think from an operator perspective, I think he's easily uh, someone that I can bet on. Um, if Blackbird was founded by some anon developer in like some random country or like some like some random dev living in their mom's basement, then I would not be excited. But because the founder um, has a significant track record, uh, it makes me a lot more incentivized to you know engage with the application go to these restaurants eat at these restaurants tip graciously because you, you you also want the early adopters on the supply side the restaurants to also be rewarded um i think a billion dollars supply fdv is reasonable um and given it's crypto i can definitely see some euphoric like craziness right where everyone shorts and there's like some short, short squeeze um but you know i, I think a, like two dollar fly is reasonable um and you know even if you only get a couple hundred fly tokens per day um i still think the ev or the ex expected value to dine in at these restaurants is pretty high um and you know like it's it's not just some random token that you're gonna farm you can also use it for in-store perks um and you know um in the light paper or the flight paper um, that you can find on their website, um, Leventhal, um, who's been connected in the restaurant and the hospitality business for a couple of decades, um, understands that you know the restaurant profit margins have been compressing for the past couple of decades, and the future relies on operator, operators shifting their focus towards guest engagement, marketing, segmentation, not just you know trying to optimize for um, costs because inflation is still remaining rampant, uh, still remains pretty high. The cost of um, goods 
it just keeps going up. Um, the minimum wage keeps going up. Um, and, you know, it's not enough to just optimize for costs. It's not up, like just or you know, like, you know, optimizing for like price points. You just have to find your a thousand true fans and try to find better ways to engage with your audience. And that way, try to monetize that way and even sell like subscription services. And Liebenthal also talked about, you know, thinking of these restaurants like creators. Um, we saw this in, like emerging trend with front tech, right? Like, you know, with social tokens, but similarly, uh, Blackbird wants to help all these restaurants find their 1,000 true fans to develop better relationships and monetization opportunities in the future. And, you know, I've, <laughs> I, I, yeah, like this is like the manager of Madame Vo. This is the owner of Upside Pizza. Um, and, you know, like at this point, like I've gone so many times that they kind of recognize me. Um, and they've also talked about, yeah, it's, it's pretty difficult to operate a business, you know, let alone in Manhattan, right? Um, and even myself, um, it, like this topic speaks uh, it is like very close and dear to my heart because my family owns Japanese restaurants, multiple of them in the Bay Area, um, and I worked in them. Um, and actually, like before I, I even entered crypto, um, I wanted to like open my own sandwich shop. Uh, so like my first job out of college, I worked at this boba company called Boba Guys, working in headquarters, working on okay, how do we scale the business? How do we you know lower costs? Uh, how do we like create like better goods? How do we upsell um, and stuff like that? Um, and you know, I learned a lot of the problems along the way. Um, you know all the hidden costs uh, related to running an opera uh, like running a business um and you know it's if you look at you know like even in college i worked at chipotle or as a brand ambassador um, i worked for a coffee company um as a consultant and i also co-founded my coffee company um uh, like during and after college uh so you know definitely like the restaurant like industry um you know, I, I definitely see, like, like I, I mean, I definitely saw firsthand, like, the problems and the difficulties surrounding it. So anything that helps, like, even potentially, like, my family, right, like, survive uh, in this difficult world, um, this is something I really want to support. Um, and I also see a lot of potential in. Um, and ultimately, right, like, even if you don't believe in this, like, crypto needs good stories, right? I mean, like, what, like what's all the headlines in crypto, right? It's like FTX going to zero, like, Sam Bankman fried um, being a fraudster, like, you know, like, all the headlines are, like, this negative sentiment um, across just the average person in crypto is just bad. Um, and I think anything that could create for, like, good stories, you know, like, like, for example, like, what if Upside Pizza, as an early adopter of Blackboard, is able to open new locations in Manhattan and other, uh, like maybe Brooklyn, as a result of Blackboard, right? They get a bunch of fly tokens, um, they sell a bunch of memberships, um, their engagement is higher, um, they have annual recurring, uh, you know, revenue in the form of memberships, and that way they have more sustainable, uh, like, business uh, model, and that way, you know, like, they, they're able to expand to, like, 10 locations worldwide. Um, and no, it's like a feel-good story, something like this, I think, needs to happen. Um, and if Blackboard can help, like, family businesses survive in this, like, really tough environment, um, um, you know, I, I think that alone is a pretty good use case. So obviously, what are some concerns? I know, I'm sure people have some. Um, and one thing, right, um, I, I think about tokenomics all the time. Um, and one problem I see uh, is if people like myself expect Fly to pump, then there's little incentive for me to use the Fly token in app, right, uh, for perks. Uh, so, you know, like, it's kind of like the Bitcoin problem. Uh, if people expect Bitcoin to appreciate, then like, why would people use it as money? Um, and in the other, uh, on the other hand, if Fly dumps in price, then there's literally no demand to eat to earn. So there's also like, reasons why maybe like the team should focus on like a dual token mechanism where maybe like the fly token is like this in-app currency and there there's like another token that kind of um like a, uh, maybe like absorbs like the volatility of the fly token right like maybe the fly price target is like a dollar and then you know, whenever there's volatility like there's some other token and you know, something like that um because otherwise you know how do you control for like the price and like how do you, yeah i mean to be honest i, I I, 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 I think the team will figure it out. Um, I think it will normalize over time. Um, I think that when the token does go liquid, it's, there's gonna be a bunch of volatility, um, but in the next couple of years, you know, it's gonna stabilize at some point um, and people will value it as like a utility slash equity type of token. Um, another problem is that currently, it doesn't really matter whether you spend $5 or $100 on a meal, um, each tap-in gives you the same amount of fly tokens. Um, and there's like this super overpowered combo um, that a lot of people have been abusing. Um, and it's this pizza to ice cream combo, right? It's a five minute walk. It costs under $10 and it gives them the same amount of tokens because, you know, I spend, you know, $5 at Upside Pizza, I get 2,300 tokens. Um, and I spend $100 at Madden Bow, I get like the same amount of tokens. Um, so the incentive mechanism is clearly not there. Um, and, you know, some members of the Humble Farmer Army, uh, you know, the Discord community, um, they're, I mean, they're, they're not like, you know, attacking the system in any way. They're 
I mean, the system was designed in, in this particular way. So they're just like buying pizza, buying ice cream, gaining some weight, um, but they think the trade off is worth it. Um, so like, how are they going to fix this? Um, and, you know, uh, if you go to the Discord on Blackbird, um, <laughs> they, they actually like suspended some accounts because they saw someone like tapping in like five times in a particular day. They're like, okay, like this person is probably not like using Blackbird in its intended way. Um, and, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're like banning accounts. Um, and if they're, like, if, uh, if these accounts were banned wrongfully, then just email them and whatnot. Um, and then Austin here, right? It's all fun and game. Still the ZK sync people try to airdrop farm Blackbird, right? It definitely uh, seems, seems like a reasonable um, outcome here. Um, I, mean, I mean, this is crypto, right? I mean, crypto people, right? They don't care, right? They just want to maximize tokens. Uh, they're all profit driven. Um, so if you don't uh, design systems in the perfect way, um, then you know, it's going to be sibled in this particular way. Um, and it also concerns around, you know, like Blackbird being a US-based company, uh, can they actually issue a token? Um, and Jake, uh, uh, who is a th the team member at Blackbird, uh, I own some of his uh, friend tech keys, and he mentioned that, yes, like the Fly token will eventually be on public blockchains. It's not it's, it's not deployed right now. Um, and then, you know, check out the Fly paper. Um, and, you know, like a couple of days ago, um, people only got like 400 tokens, um, but you know, it's normalizing. People are using the platform. Um, like I think the Masari conference is this week along with other uh, events in New York. So I think a lot of people, uh, like crypto people are in New York. So like they're like tapping in. Um, and yeah, so like Masari main it's happening here. Um, and the question around weeding out people that tap in and leave without buying anything, um, easiest ways to tie in coins with like dollar spent. And Ben, I own, I own some of his friend tech keys and he mentioned, yeah, like we're working through the exact question this week. Um, and I think it comes down to hitting a minimum the restaurant sets and hopefully like integrating with the point of sale system. Uh, and maybe Blackbird can even create its own point of sale system or like its device and actually compete with like that of Square and whatnot. Um, pretty difficult. Um, I think they're gonna just focus on the mobile app but, you know, you can kind of definitely see the direction of, you know, where this company can potentially go in the future. So looking ahead, um, you know, like, can this evolve to more than just eat to earn? Like, what more features can they add on? Um, and, like, ultimately, like, the bull case is, you know, utilizing tokens to incentivize real-world behavior and real-world activity is pretty novel. Um, Blackbird being led by Van Leeuwenhoek makes this even more compelling given his connections and execution skills. He basically knows everyone in the restaurant and hospitality industry. So, you know, if you want something to be done, then chances are it's going to be done. Um, so this is like a, like a text message that I got from someone, but, um, you know, he also, so he was dining in at some restaurant, uh, and there was like some meeting with a Blackboard sales representative. Um, and there's going to be a new feature upcoming, uh, with prepaid menu items where you can have, like, you can order items ahead of time, um, using stable coins or the fly token. Um, so, you know, the fly token can be used to buy meals and whatnot. Um, and other features, right? Stablecoin payments. I think this is like one of the biggest, biggest thing, um, undercutting Square and other credit card processors and fees, right? Even charging 1% of all transaction fees is a pretty big value add, um, you know, to get around, to help restaurants get around like the three to 4% charges in that fly payments, right? Uh, so that can be, there can be some token things there. Restaurants launching loyalty programs. So upside pizza, $200 a year, you get free pizza every single day. Um, and then maybe, um, Blackbird can take one or two percent of uh, those transaction fees, and then integrations with bars, clubs, etc. Um, in their most recent blog article, um, they were looking into uh, like front tech and like the bonding curve, um, and he also gave that uh, like the writer. Uh, you know, um, wrote, wrote about this uh, case study where um, this company called Gertrude's, they were able to use Blackbird to raise $60,000 uh, to help save their restaurant. So even before the tokens were like being emitted, um, you know, Gertrude was able to, you know, get people to download the application, buy memberships um, and help raise money. So, you know, definitely like a use case there, right? The idea of 1000 true fans. Um, and Blackbird also considered, you know, using like a bonding curve um, to sell memberships at a low initial price. And then uh, like, so basically how a bonding curve works is like when the supply of a membership is low, uh, then the cost of it is low. But as more and more people enter or like buy these membership, the cost goes higher, right? So it's kind of like um, the opposite of like the typical supply demand model where uh, less like le with, with, with less demand, is, uh, it's a low price and with more demand, it's a higher price. Uh, and you know, kind of like think about that, right? Like with like bars and clubs, um, I had a friend visiting um, like last week um, and they would try to go out to like bars and nightclubs um, in New York uh, for like Friday and Saturdays, um, but it was all booked. Um, but like what these bars and clubs can do is they can just sell memberships on a bonding curve. Um, and you know, if you're like an early adopter of a bar maybe, uh, and you're betting on the future, uh, maybe you buy a membership for a hundred dollars a year. Um, and then in like five years from now, the restaurant is, or like, sorry, the bar 
Library is like huge, right? It's like the the top like place to hang out in Manhattan, and like the memberships are worth like ten thousand uh, dollars. So you know you can all kind of view this like these memberships as a, like as like tradable NFTs that can be sold at a later time. Um, so you know there's like some potential there, right? Maybe they can have their own NFT marketplace charging like a two point five percent fee. So uh, lots of opportunities. Um, they just launched, so it's you know it's. It's probably bad to like just judge the application for what it is right now, but just more think about okay, like what it could be in the future. The team is very legit; they have a bunch of money, um, and I definitely think that it has legs. Um, and then, and I think you know, I've talked about this trend towards mass consumer apps. We had Front Tech, and now we have Blackbird, both launching on Basechain. And I think people are tired of crypto pump and dumps, just tokens going up and then going down. People making money, people get, like getting burned. Um, I think you know, for the next bull market, people need to see actual value created in the real world. And Blackboard aims to achieve this by using tokens and NFTs as a way to rest, as a, as a way for restaurants to find their 1,000 true fans and to better monetize um, on their loyal customers. Both Frentech and Blackboard launching on Basechain is a pretty interesting development. It seems like developers prefer to build on in layer two that's directly connected to a regulatory compliance centralized exchange like Coinbase. Um, so you know we talk about like where are all the consumer apps. Like, where are they going to launch? Is it going to be on Solana? Is it going to be on Avalanche? Is it going to be on Atom or like all these other like layer twos, like, uh, alternative uh, layer ones? It seems like the trend is definitely going towards Coinbase and base, uh, base chain, right? The layer two, um, which has some ramifications for user adoption. Um, and, you know, I, I know what people are thinking. It's a Ponzi. It's not going to work. Um, one thing that I've, you know, figured out is that, you know, I, I, I've been telling or, I, you know, I, I've been sharing this um, in, like you know, with uh, in the Discord, um, I've been sharing this with my friends, um, or in like various chat groups. And anyone in New York is like, "Oh my God, like this is amazing, right?" Like I definitely see the potential here. And then anyone that's not in New York is like, "Oh, like it's a Ponzi." Uh, but I think that's partly because okay, like right now it's only available in New York. It's hard to participate in. Um, but I do think that as this expands nationwide, I think the sentiment around it is going to get much better. Um, and like maybe it's gonna like it's gonna fail, right? Like they they raised thirty five million dollars, and maybe the token goes to zero. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's it's a startup, right? Right? It's an experiment, but like, why are you hitting? Right? I mean, crypto needs applications. Um, I think there's been such an overinvestment in the infrastructure side, right? Like VCs and angel investors, they don't want to invest in apps. They just want to invest in layer twos and alto ones, and they all launch at these ridiculous valuations, and they just go down only, right? It's like a way for VCs and insiders to like just dump on retail. Um, so I think it's pretty cool to have like this mechanism where in order for you to farm it, you have to literally go, right? Um, so, you know, the early adopters that actually pay a bunch of money, right? Hundreds of dollars like myself to, you know, pay for these meals, uh, we could potentially be rewarded um, if the network actually succeeds in the longer run. Um, so it's a pretty fair, I guess, distribution process. I mean, it has its flaws um, and I guess it's like kind of geo like fenced to New York right now. Um, but I also think that's like, you know, like that problem will be fixed in the future. Um, so, you know, if you, want to see me, right? If you want to meet with me, chances are, right, if you go to any of those restaurants, you'll see me at some point in the near future. Um, I'm, I'll also try to host like meetup events at like one of these locations. So maybe I'll like try to book it um, for like a particular night, like, you know, have like network events. I, I think that would be pretty cool. Um, I think, you know, it's easy to get burned down in crypto. There's so much going on or like there's like nothing going on, price is going down. Um, and I think, you know, one thing that people lack is like the human connection. Um, and I want to foster that more. Um, and given my background, I guess, in like hospitality, um, I really am excited for the future of that future of the application. Um, and, you know, I aim to be one of the top holders of Fly um, and hopefully not gain too much weight. Right. That's always the hope. Um, another big case, bear case, right, is like maybe we all survived like the crypto bear market in 2022 and 2023 uh, via farming food airdrops, but now our body fat is 37% and you can't relate to anybody in the world. Um, but you know, America already has an obesity problem. Like, you know, like <laughs> what more is like this food eat or nap? Um, but, anyways, you know, definitely like the application. Um, you know, if you no, want to uh, meet, meet up with me, right? Like, eat to earn, like, just hit me up. Maybe, you know, I have some, some availabilities. Um, but, Definitely, like if you're in the East Coast, I definitely think that this is definitely worth doing. Um, so, no, thank you guys for watching. See you guys another time. Hopefully, this video is useful, and I'll see you another time. Bye bye.